Many of you, especially from the Cleveland, Ohio area, are familiar with the annual Cleveland Air Show at Burke Lakefront Airport, as it's synonymous with the Labor Day weekend. But did you know that long before the Cleveland Air Show, there was a time when Cleveland was the center of national and international attention as the host city of the national air races held at Cleveland Municipal Airport, now known as Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. And on today's episode, we'll be telling you some of the history from this golden era of air racing, its Cleveland connection, and showing you one of the prestigious Greif trophies, won by pilot Gus H. Gotch, who took third place in Cleveland in September 1937. This is a rare sight indeed, as many of these trophies are in museums. But this one is here today, and we're going to tell its story, right here on History and Relics. The National Air Races were a series of pylon and cross-country races that took place in the United States starting in 1920, when publisher Ralph Pulitzer sponsored the Pulitzer Trophy Race and the Pulitzer Speed Trophy for military airplanes at Roosevelt Field in Long Island, New York, in an effort to publicize aviation and his newspaper. By 1929, the races moved to Cleveland and became known as the Cleveland National Air Races. They drew the best flyers of the time including Tex Rankin, Jimmy Waddell, Roscoe Turner, and Jimmy Doolittle, along with many others from the pioneer age of aviation. The races included a variety of events, including cross-country races, originating in Portland, Oakland, and Los Angeles, with a final destination in Cleveland. Also included were landing contests, gliding demonstrations, airship flights, and parachute jumping contests. The most popular event was the annual Thompson Trophy Race, which was the most prestigious air race in the United States in the 1930s, comparable to today's Indianapolis 500 Auto Race. The Thompson, which started in 1929, was a closed course, unlimited, free-for-all air race where aviators raced their planes around an aerial race course marked by pylons. Then there was the Bendix Trophy Race, which was a cross-country air race across most of the United States starting in 1931. Then came Cleveland-born Lewis William Grieve, or more commonly known as Lou, or LW. He was a prolific inventor, an aviation pioneer, industrialist, and later became the president of the National Air Races. He had a summer home in nearby Mentor on the Lake, Ohio, where many of the air racers who were in town for the Nationals would come visit including Jimmy Doolittle, Amelia Earhart, and Charles and Ann Lindbergh, just to name a few. However, the exact location of this home and whether it's still standing is currently unknown. As early as 1903, Lou began submitting the first of his 46 patents. His first patent was awarded in 1904 for his impact tool design, now widely known as the jackhammer. He had other patents, that were tied to early automotive shock absorbers or air springs, as well as a host of similar products specially designed for aircraft use. One of these was known as the Aero Strut, or later referred to as Aerals. In 1929, Lou established the Cleveland Pneumatic Tool Race and Aero Trophy Race for women pilots. This race was a derby that began in Santa Monica, California and concluded in Cleveland, Ohio. In 1930, the Derby began in Long Beach, California and finished in Chicago, Illinois. The race later became known as the Women's Air Derby or National Women's Derby, but it was also nicknamed the Powder Puff Derby and the victor was awarded the Aero Trophy, named after Lou's patented shock absorber. Some of the most well-known female pilots and racers here were Poncho Barnes, Bobby Trout, Louise Thadden, and Amelia Earhart. 
In 1934, he sponsored the annual $25,000 Lewis W. Grieve Trophy Race. The Grieve Race was a high-speed, closed-course event. All planes were required to have a 550 cubic inch or less engine displacement. The engine size restriction was implemented to encourage the use and implementation of technology to garner efficiency in the low power airplane groups as well as faster speeds. The Grief Trophy Race was held at the National Air Races from 1934 through 1939. A victory would be dependent upon pilot skill, airplane design, and luck, but the reward was great. Not only was there cash to be had, but the top place in Grief Trophy was a spectacle in and of itself. This grand trophy consisted of a silver aviator holding an airplane, standing on a silver globe with a silver base on marble. The overall height was 35 inches, including a 10 and a quarter inch marble base. The total weight was 197 pounds. The trophy contains 152.8 ounces of sterling silver. The Grief Trophy is now on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. In the rules for the Grieve race, the owner of the winning airplane was given possession of the Grieve Trophy for 10 months, at which time it was returned, but in exchange received a gold plaque that the winner would keep. The second place pilot received a silver plaque and a bronze plaque went to the third place winner. Lewis William Grieve passed away suddenly of a heart attack on February 2, 1942, at the age of 59 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Telegrams and letters poured in from around the world to his wife Elsie Baldwin and his three children, Janice Roberts, Fred B., and Doris Wagenlander. Lewis was later buried at Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio. And now, let's take a moment to talk about our featured plane, the Keith Ryder R4 Firecracker. This plane was built by Keith Ryder in 1936 for the National Air Races. Ryder began building racers as early as 1931 with the R1. The R4, which was Ryder's fourth design, was registered as NX261Y and was powered by a 200 plus horsepower six cylinder Manasco B6S Buccaneer engine with a 489 cubic inch displacement. The Firecracker was a relatively conventional aircraft constructed of a steel tube fuselage with wood formers and was fabric covered. The wing was all wood and plywood covered with a very small retractable gear and an even smaller tail skid. It had an enclosed canopy and was painted overall yellow. It had an 18 foot wingspan. It was 19 feet 9 inches long and weighed about 925 pounds. Sporting the race number 70, pilot Roger Don Ray flew the Firecracker to win the Shell Speed Dash in 1936 with a speed of 225.549 miles an hour and came in third in the Thompson at 236.559 miles an hour. Ryder sold the R4 to Bill Schoenfeld after the 1936 races. Schoenfeld had the racer modified, replacing the original Manesco B6S Buccaneer engine with a six-cylinder C6S4 Super Buccaneer that had 330 horsepower and a 544 cubic inch displacement. The aircraft was then renamed the Schoenfeld Firecracker and retained its racing number 70. In early 1937, Schoenfeld hired experienced race pilot Gus H. Gotch to pilot his newly acquired plane. Gotch was born in 1896 and hailed from Wisconsin, but later lived in Los Angeles, California, where he owned and operated a small airport near Inglewood. In his first race in the Firecracker at the St. Louis Air Races on Saturday, May 29, 1937, Gotch got into a near dead heat coming in second with a speed of 239.9 miles an hour, just behind Marion McKean, who squeaked out 240 miles an hour in the brown Miss Los Angeles. After this race, Gus nosed the plane over during the landing roll. This eliminated the racer from the next day's races but Schoenfeld had a prop sent in from the Story Golly Company in Los Angeles. The prop was the most serious part damaged, and one was flown in during the night. However, when the prop arrived, it was found that it was drilled for the older Buccaneer engine. 
O. Phelan of the Phelan Propeller Company was at the races and came to the rescue. He flew the prop to his plant in Marshall, Missouri and had it redrilled and balanced. So, with the bent cowl and air scoops, the number 70 was ready for the last day of the races. This was Monday, May 31st, Memorial Day, and the race was the weekend's featured race, the Missouri Brewers Association Trophy Race. Gotch got off to a slow start and loafed a few laps, then opened the throttle on the firecracker and went on to win the event with a speed of 251.6 miles an hour. A few of the laps, he turned 260 miles an hour. After the race, the R4 was returned to Los Angeles, where the damage to the cowling and the air scoops were repaired, and an extra tank for the Thompson Trophy race was added. And that takes us to the 17th annual National Air Races held in Cleveland, Ohio on September 3rd through the 6th at Cleveland Municipal Airport. By this time period, it had only been two months since Amelia Earhart's disappearance, or as it was reported in 1937, as lost at sea during her around the world flight to which a memorial race was established. Additionally, amongst the contest committee chiefs here was now former racer Jimmy Doolittle, who was an honorary judge at the Cleveland event. Gus H. Gotch was scheduled to take to the air on Sunday, September 5th, 1937. The Grieve Trophy race was the feature race of the day and was the most important race for the 549 cubic inch or lower powered race planes that weekend. The race was supposed to be 30 laps of a five mile triangular course, but due to blustery winds that day, the race was delayed until very late in the afternoon and then shortened to 20 laps so that it would be concluded well before dusk. In addition to weather conditions, the firecracker was still not in top form as engine problems continued to trouble the plane. However, Gus was able to come in third place in the Grieve Trophy race with a speed of 231.593 miles an hour, good enough to take home a cash prize of $1,500. Gus was behind Rudy Kling, who took first place with 232.272 miles an hour and Steve Whitman coming in at second with a speed of 231.990. But Gus was ahead of Roger Don Ray and Marion McKean, who rounded out the match with their fourth and fifth place finishes. And even with the additional troubles he had with the firecracker, Gotch managed to pick up a seventh place finish the following day on September 6th in the Thompson with a speed of 217.81 miles an hour. Gus Scotch was quite vocal in his displeasure of the firecracker's operating antics, which led to a reported falling out with Bill Schoenfeld, who would go on to replace Gotch with Tony Levere. Levere mastered the firecracker and at the 1938 Oakland, California air races, won two races and then won the 1938 Grieve Trophy at Cleveland. The firecracker can now be seen at the Plains of Fame Air Museum in Chino, California. And now, let's take a look at Gus Gotch's third place Grieve Trophy won in Cleveland on September 5, 1937. The trophy measures approximately 21 and a half inches high. The back measures 11 and a quarter wide, and the base slightly wider at 14 and a quarter. The trophy weighs about 10 pounds. This wall mountable award was expertly designed and made by Jostens out of Awatana, Minnesota, which is still in business today. Now the wood base and backing appears to have been possibly refinished at some point, but many years ago. But that does not take away from the great amount of detail this piece has, especially with regard to the bronze angel holding the airplane, the black onyx or mirrored back surrounded in bronze with the pilots looking on. The bronze placard is also stunning, detailing the national and grieve races. And speaking of the placard, we noticed a slight mistake in Gus H. Gotch's name. Typically, it was common to see G.H. Gotch, but here the G is actually a C and shown as C.H. Gotch. We looked into this further and determined that this error must have occurred at the point of the record keeping at the races, as this error carried through to the 1938 program, which detailed out the winners of the 1937 races. And here you can see C.H. Gotch instead of G.H. Gotch. What a wonderful piece of air race and aviation history. Generally, these are only seen in museums, such as the Crawford Auto Aviation Museum in Cleveland, the National Museum of the Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Base in Dayton, Ohio, 
the EAA Aviation Museum in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and even the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. On May 28, 1938, Gus Gotch was among the entrants to the first edition of the Pacific International Air Races, held at Oakland Airport in Alameda County, California. He was at the helm of the Folkerts SK-2 plane named the Foo, owned by Ted Forden of Detroit, Michigan. Originally, it was Roger Don Ray who was slated to pilot the plane, but the air transport company that he worked for said no, and thus Gus Gotch was hired to take Ray's place. His first flight in the Foo was a feature race on Saturday, May 28th, where he finished fourth place. On Sunday afternoon, May 29th, the 42-year-old Gotch took place in a contest for the 550 cubic inch or less displacement planes, whereby a 12-lap, 100-mile free-for-all took place. On the opening lap of the race, Gutch Gotch cut wide around the first pylon of the course that was resting on floats in the bay. He then came to the shoreside pylon at a speed of more than 200 miles an hour. Gotch whipped over in a series of rolls, and the tiny plane dove and struck the shallow waters of the San Francisco Bay, about a half mile offshore in view of an estimated 20,000 spectators. It was reported that the airplane barrel rolled upwards and then smashed straight downwards into the bay. Only the tail section was seen protruding from the waters. Rescuers, including cameraman Carl Bigelow, members of the Oakland Tribune newspaper, and the Coast Guard managed to pull the plane out enough to free Gus's body, which was tightly wedged in the cockpit of the submerged aircraft, partially wrapped in the silk folds of his parachute. The plane remained buried in the mud. Gotch never had a chance to survive. Upon pulling him out of the aircraft, the plane's speed indicator needle was seen jammed and frozen at 345 miles an hour. And before Gotch's unseeing eyes was this motto pasted to the cowling. If you want to live to 60, don't drive 60. A strange epitaph for a racing pilot. Gotch's accident was the second fatal accident involving a pilot during the three-day event. On Saturday, May 28th, Ralph G. Johnson, 44 years old from Los Angeles, crashed during an exhibition flight. And before the start of the proceedings on Tuesday, May 24th, a steel worker employed by a contractor in the erection of one of the pylons of the air race course was killed when it collapsed. Gus H. Gotch was buried on June 3, 1938 at Grandview Memorial Park and Crematory in Los Angeles, California. That concludes our presentation for this week. We would like to thank a whole host of friends and associates from coast to coast who wish to remain anonymous but provided a wealth of information to us for this story. Thank you also goes out to Randy Inlow, of the Grandview Memorial Park and Crematory in Los Angeles for providing us key intel as well as the photo of Gus's gravesite. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID History and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.